All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about two very rare things that are coming up, actually. The second one's gonna be a surprise for the end of the video, but the first one, we're gonna be talking about a very, very rare late snowfall for a lot of areas in the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know, what is a movie that you can watch over and over and over again? For me, it's Forrest Gump. If I see that one on TV, and watch it and it comes back on again, I'm just gonna keep watching it because I love that movie so, so much. But let me know in the comments down below which movie it is for you. Now looking at this map here, this is the area where I expect it is possible to see snowfall from the 6th through the 8th, possibly even through the 10th for some areas. Uh, there's gonna be multiple dates where we're gonna see some snowfall uh, for these areas. Don't worry, we're gonna go through the modeled guidance, so I'll be able to talk about all of that with you guys. But this blue area is generally the area where we're expecting the biggest chance to see some flakes, possibly even some high elevation accumulations here. Very, very rare for a lot of these areas to see snowfall this late in the season. I told you guys it was going to get very cold, but I'm sure you guys didn't see this coming. All right. Uh, now, let's go ahead and move on, and we're going to take a look at what the air temperature is going to be like about May 6th. So, starting out on Wednesday morning, May 6th. And you can see it's going to be near freezing for a lot of these areas. Uh, we see 30s, mid-30s, upper 30s for a lot of these regions. The blues is indicating under 32 degrees. So we have areas that are near or below freezing in a lot of these regions. Now we're about to move on, and then we're going to start talking about the upper atmosphere and some of the higher up temperatures because that's going to play a very very big role in some of this late season snowfall and then we're going to start taking a look at our simulated radar talking about what areas could see snowfall and when all right so here we are and you can see again the blues is where we're below freezing and if these upper air temperatures are below freezing what it's indicating is that we're going to be able to see snowfall developing higher up and then the near freezing temperatures will be cold enough for this snow to get to the ground. So that's really going to be a t big determining factor. And you can see pretty much all of these areas are below freezing in the upper atmosphere. I've even seen sleet and grouple in temperatures as high as mid to upper 50s. Actually, recently here in Virginia, we've been dealing with some times where precipitation will be heavy enough to get that group pulled down uh, in some pretty high temperatures. So it's not going to take a lot to see snowfall for these areas as long as we have these very, very cold Arctic air in the upper atmosphere. Again, all of this is very rare, though, even the, even the upper air conditions that we're going to be dealing with here. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to our simulated radar, and I'm sure that's what a lot of you are wondering about. So we're going to take a look at our first frame here, and you can see that we're not really dealing with too much snowfall yet, except for in the northern areas of the state of Pennsylvania. There's really rain showers all over the place, but we are starting to see snowfall mix in, and this is about 8 a.m. on Wednesday, May 6th. Let's go ahead and move on towards the afternoon hours, and you can see it shifts further south to where more like West Virginia, the mountains of eastern West Virginia are going to be dealing with most of that snowfall, and then it kind of switches back over to rain for a lot of the areas in Pennsylvania. So there's going to be a very messy accumulation type, uh, but nevertheless, a lot of these areas will see snowfall. All right, now this isn't even our main date where we're expecting a lot of snowfall, so let's go ahead and move on in just a second where we're going to be able to see our main area of snowfall. We're going to take a look at the total snowfall for that first event first, and then we're going to start talking about that more major snowfall that's potentially coming up. All right, and here's that total snowfall, and you can see that in the blues, which is only the only thing on screen here, we're going to be dealing with the dusting, and in those lighter shades, we might even be looking at about two to three inches of snow, but again, those are for very, very high elevation areas for Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Now, let's go ahead and start talking about our more major area of snowfall, and this is going to be for about Saturday at about 2 a.m., and you can see that we're dealing with 20s widespread. This is the surface temperatures, 20s and 30s widespread throughout these blue regions, and the very, very light green areas are pretty darn close to freezing as well. Let's go ahead and look at those upper air temperatures, and you can see a huge difference here. Uh, well, well, well below freezing, especially in those darker blue shades, so definitely going to see snowfall making its way to the ground here uh, for the morning hours of Saturday. Now let's move back a little bit and look at Friday afternoon and we're seeing a storm system move through and we're seeing some blues showing up here for Ohio and Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and move on towards about 8 p.m. on Friday and you can see some snowfall starting to mix in for some of those similar regions, Pennsylvania and 
West Virginia. This isn't a coincidence. These are very, very high elevation areas, and this is why we're seeing these areas get snowfall as opposed to the lower elevation areas. And then by the time we're at about 2 a.m., which is, again, when we were looking at those temperatures, uh, we're seeing a lot more widespread snow showers going on. Obviously, not a lot of people are going to be awake at this hour, but some of the lower elevation areas in Pennsylvania, New York, Virginia, North Carolina, starting to see snow. This is very, very rare to see snowfall, and this is almost like a Miller B. Nor'easter. We see a 996 millibar low pressure system offshore of Long Island. Uh, if this was wintertime, we'd be looking at a major, major snowstorm here, uh, but it's obviously May and this is happening. Let's take a look at 2 p.m. on Saturday, and you can see that we do have some snow showers still lingering for a lot of the regions in the northeastern United States. Again, some pretty low elevation areas that don't typically see snow, snowfall at all this time of year. And then let's go ahead and take a look at about 8 a.m. on Sunday, May 10th, and you can see some snow showers lingering, but it's basically all said and done. All right, now we're about to look at the total snowfall on all for for all of the snowfall that we're expecting this week into the early, into you know the weekend this weekend uh, and then we're going to get into a surprise portion of this video that I have to talk about which is another maybe possibly even more rare of an event that we have coming up all right so here we are looking at our total snowfall, and you can see after it's all said and done, we still have those blues pretty widespread throughout the areas that I drew on screen for the earlier portions of this video. We're going to be dealing with a dusting to possibly even three inches in these very, very light blue shades. And then as we get into those purples, that's where we're looking at maybe three to six inches of snow. So for the higher elevation areas in Pennsylvania and New York State, as well as Vermont and New Hampshire, potentially looking at three inches plus. So some actual accumulations are possible for a lot of these regions here. Uh, and then in those pinks, which I'm seeing a few dots of those in the mountainous regions of Pennsylvania, that's where we have the potential to see six inches plus. So this is definitely a very, very rare early snowfall event for a lot of these regions. Uh, and it's just going to be so cold. A lot of you questioned, like, is this even going to be an Arctic blast? People were kind of questioning me on that. Well, we're seeing snowfall now. We're seeing Arctic conditions that were over the Arctic regions of the world move down into the United States. Very, very rare events taking place here. The weather is very weird right now. I think people are underestimating how strange it has really been lately. Very, very unusual and very rare type of pattern we're in right now. This is basically like a February, March type pattern that we're in in the earlier portions of May. It's usually hot by now in a lot of regions, but no, we're talking about snowfall. All right, to make things even more unusual, we're about to move on and we're going to talk about the potential for a tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, you heard me correctly. We are talking about the tropics. So we're about to move on and talk about that. All right, and for this first tropical update of 2020, I have a Gulf tropical depression potential to talk about with you guys. We're going to take a look at some of these modeled guidance here. So let's go ahead and first off take a look at our sea surface temperature anomalies and you can see we're well above average as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned in the Gulf of Mexico. Also the Caribbean and areas near Cuba as well. All well above average temperatures. I talked about this in all of my tropical outlooks that I made earlier in the year but we're already talking about some tropical activity here. All right so let's go ahead and move on and this is what we call our Probability of tropical depression. Basically, we need 20 knot winds inside of a tropical um, type storm to give us that tropical depression status. So this is from the ECMWF model, the European model. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is right now days zero through three. So this is going to be for uh, Tuesday, which is today through Friday, May 8th. So you can see there's actually zero to 10% chance. So very, very low chance, basically none. Uh, but as we look at day one through four, which is the sixth through the ninth, you can see we do get that little blob of 10 to 20% chance. And then as we look at days three through six, you can see that's going to be from May 8th through May 11th. So Friday through Monday, we are taking a look at the chance. And that chance is about 20 to 30% at this time that we will see a tropical depression start out near just about the bottom of Texas, starting out in northern Mexico and making its way eastward. And this tropical depression would hit Florida basically uh, at this point is basically the consensus here. So that's very interesting as well. We would see direct impacts to the United States from this one. 
Now also let's take a look at those tropical storm chances and that's pretty much the same probability, 20 to 30 percent chance. So there's also a chance that this would become a tropical storm which is 34 knots plus. So this is definitely a pretty rare setup for this early in May and I'll tell you why it's happening. It's because of those sea surface temperatures. Those sea surface temperatures are basically very very ripe and very very high and if we start to see warmer than normal temperatures above these areas we're going to really start to see uh, a, the big chance for a big Gulf of Mexico hurricane year, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and take a look at our direct weather um, tropical outlook map. And this is something I'm going to be doing throughout the year this year for every single invest that we have. And an invest is an area of tropical disturbance that could potentially become a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. So I'm going to be doing these types of outlooks throughout the year. You can see our low pressure system is going to start out near Texas and Mexico and make its way eastward and then make its way into Florida, possibly past it. And it could go up the coast, honestly. We don't really know what it's going to do after that point. Uh, but it's basically most likely only going to be a tropical disturbance, so a, a pretty much a bad area of precipitation. But there is a slight chance that this would become a tropical depression or even a tropical storm. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on this one. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys what would be the perfect temperature and weather conditions, basically, if it had to be that way for the rest of your life. And Tomahawk, Tomahawk Eagle said, high-end 60s reaching into 70s with storms in the afternoon. And I couldn't agree anymore. That sounds so, so peaceful. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.